This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Yes, tis that time of the week to do an unboxing. I know it's so lame. It's like now at this time of the year we're like unboxing every week. The consumerism of it all, guilty as charged. Shoot me. I'm right here. I'm right here. Put me down. Put me down, Jesus. <laughs> Put me down now or let me buy Chanel for the rest of my days. Oh, child, we're going to do an unboxing, right? But first, um, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Thumb up this video. Let me know what you think about all of this consumerism sadness uh, in the comment section down below. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Again, access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dick of All Spelled Together. Thank you to all my patrons and members I've already pledged. Without you, the Fashion Bunker wouldn't be here. And also, thanks to all my live reviewers and co-conspirators who are right now in the chats. I live stream every Saturday. Everybody's invited to join my live streams every Saturday where we all get to chat together. So I have my wonderful co-chatters and the sidebar. We're going to unbox this uh, little stuff together. So a uh, quick uh, recap. I already made a video talking about this Chanel, Chanel 19... Chanel 1921, really, Jacob. The vampire in me just kicks in at a certain point because I am 237 years old. So I do from time to time reminisce about 1921. But no, it's the 2021 cruise collection. So I went to the event. I even got a little uh, Polaroid kind of snap digit. It's not a real Polaroid, but, you know, they print it out for you at the event. This is yours truly pimping it up uh, at the, the, the Chanel um, installation. So, this is what I bought. It has nothing to do with the cruise collection, 21. This is a piece, uh, it's a bit older, and I've been eyeing it for over a year. Um, originally, it showcased on the website in uh, a kind of a rainbow color, but, uh, well, you'll see it. And then this, we're going to also unbox. This was the freebie. Yeah, believe it or not, Chanel freebie. Yeah, and not a freebie with purchase. This was the freebie for the guests that were invited to the launch of the cruise collection. So as I left the event, I was gifted this. Actually, let's unbox this first because this is the main attraction. So let's 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 do this first. I already saw what it is um, and I ain't impressed. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. I'm very grateful that I got a present. Don't get me wrong, I'm not ungrateful. But when you see what it, be, okay, when you, girl, uh, seriously, Chanel? <laughs> now, listen, this is the only thing where I, like, my sales associate, I'm like, girl. Because they had a bag for girls and a bag for boys. I wish they gave me the female bag. Because, you know that blue, I love everything from Chanel, perfume-wise. Except for blue and beige. Those are the two I just, you can't. Those are the only two perfumes I haven't reviewed, really. So, they're giving me the all-over body spray from blue. And I, and I repeat, beggars can't be choosers. I'm super grateful for, uh, for this uh, gift, you know. But I'm honest. <laughs> I, don't, I don't wear... Anywho. All right. So this was the freebie. Thank you so much, Chanel. I don't want to sound ungrateful. I'm just kind of making a joke about this because also it's been over 11 years since Chanel released a new male fragrance. The last one they released is like 11 years ago. This, this came out in 2010. But come on, Chanel. All right. That was that. <laughs> now, the ladies got... You're going to... Listen. I know when tested, we moved past gender. No, yeah. Jacob, at least it's not stickers. I was kicked out of the boutique because the event was ending and the, and the store manager is like, okay, you got to go. You got to go. I'll wrap this up. You guys do the cash register quickly. And I'll wrap this up for Jacob. Girl, he didn't look, these were pre packaged. So they already had their little, uh, they had the sticker here on the side. Yeah. Yeah. I got a sticker. You see the sticker, the, the camellia is also a sticker actually. And then they got a little ribbon, but he just wanted me out of there because they were closing. So he didn't even put the ribbon on the actual purchase that I made. He just put the sticker on. Look at this. Slay mass sticker. Cha. 
So let's open the sticker. And then, of course, their new cheap paper bags that are like recyclable, but honestly though, so flimsy. And here's the little, he wrapped this up. He used the thin ribbon, not the thick one though. And I told my sales associate, like, I'm gonna report to you how he did this little package. He, he didn't do it with love, that's for sure. He didn't do it with love, but he put the camellia on it. You know what I mean? All right, so we're gonna take the camellia off. Little tiny cute unboxing here. So this is fall winter 2020. Oh, he didn't even close it. Oh my God. I can't believe he did this. <laughs> he did not fold it. Okay, I'm officially pissed off, Mr. Store Manager. This is not how you wrap a, a Chanel piece because it wobbles up and down. It can get scratched because this is just cardboard. Look, he just left it open like that. So this is the, the cross brooch. Oh my God, he's such a tool, that guy. I can't believe he did this. So if you're asking yourself, what the hell am I talking about? Well, this is what I'm talking about. Let's do this properly, Mr. Store Manager of Chanel. Let me, to let me show you how it's done, okay? I can't believe he did this. Oh my God, what a tool. All right, so uh, let's do this again. Look, this is the box. Now, when you open it, wait, hold on. This is how it should be packed in its soft little container. And then you open it like this. And there it is. I can't believe he did that. Good that I have this on camera. If my brooch got scratched, I swear to God, I'm going to take this video into the store, show them the video and be like, let me inspect it. Because you best believe I am not going to accept anything less than perfect. It's also really tricky with these lights, you guys. Give me a moment here. Because the lights show much more than you see in normal daylight. You know, these lights kind of like penetrate through everything. So it's a bit tricky to see through. They show you more shit than you should see. <laughs> These lights are very dangerous when you're inspecting stuff because then you end up seeing flaws even when the flaws are not really there. Because they show you little shadows and little dents and stuff. Um, I'm inspecting the pearlescence because the, the pearlescent part is... Okay, so the zoom is not working, you guys, but hold on. So this is set. So I can come in as close as I can. So it's fine. Now, is this, the pearl parts are, are not supposed to be leveled. Um, the pearl, as you can see, they are very irregular. They're supposed to be made irregular, like uh, as if the... Um, the resin or acetate used is like poured in. So the version of this brooch that appears on the Chanel website from last winter is made in a glass, like poured resin glass. So it had bubblegum pink here. It had a burgundy, burgundy, green, green. And that's the one you saw on the website and in the, on the runway. But then you have this one as an alternative colorway, which is black and white and gold. And I thought, I love both of them, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, look at the back of it. It's so beautiful. It's full on. There's no hollow part. Uh, uh, this brooch is completely solid. The back is completely filled up as well. And uh, we have the little authenticity stamp right down here. So... It's a very complex piece, a very classic Chanel. This is something that goes back to 80s Chanel. And this is the year where uh, Virginie Via 
kind of went back to 80s costume jewelry for Chanel as well. And in fact, what do we notice with this brooch? Intense yellow gold plating. Old school Chanel, like that yellow, almost, look at this. It's an intense yellow, almost like, you know, brown yellow gold. Um, super old school Chanel. Very, very heavy. Very, very, very heavy. So obviously it's not for everyone because it's a cross. And, you know, I don't see this as a religious thing at all. To me, it's just it's just very quintessentially Chanel meets Byzantine framework. Because as you can see how this is done, how they inlay the acetates inside of the metal. The metal is like a container, but it has its own design pattern. In fact... It is all, you can see it's all kind of etched in there. There's a whole pattern going on around the framework of this brooch. And in fact, also in the back, you have these kind of bursts of sun, like these rays of light, almost like a hidden message, you know, very Illuminati, isn't it? So people ask me, how am I going to style it? Well, it, it's, a, it's a simple brooch. Now, I do have this uh, 255 necklace going on here at the moment, but... It's either or, you know. It, it's it's smaller than I thought. <laughs> this thing, so I wouldn't do it with the necklace. You know what I mean? Yeah, too much if you have the necklace and the brooch. It's one or the other. Um, now you know it's small enough to be worn actually central. To close something so yeah it's a good piece for a cardigan this cardigan is very thin though so this thing is very heavy but um, if I am to wear it so let's say I can't believe the store manager didn't package it properly oh my god I'm so upset and you know what the funny thing is I told my sales assistant I said oh my god he's gonna go and pack it he doesn't know how to do this does he I will report to you. And she laughed and she said, yeah, let us know. Usually he, he can do this. I'm like, yeah. And I'm going to send her this video clip and, she's, and I'm going to tell her like. This is a brooch that works very well central. You know what I mean? Center of the outfit. It creates that line. I think a brooch like this works very well in the center of the outfit. It's, it's, it's very much um, the Chanel style when it's more central. Um, <laughs> Jane says, go all in, necklace and brooch over black. And that hair, yes. <laughs> Would be beautiful on a heavy coat. Yeah, Jesus, heavy coat, classic, expensive looking, it goes good with your frame. Thank you. Um, it says, um, uh, Jason, just says, on a heavy coat, it would be great. It's just not that massive. I do have bigger Chanel brooches that kind of fit on a lapel better. And this one also could, could look really good in the hair, you know. One could find a way to uh, attach it to, to the hair as well. Um, but definitely good to wear it central. So there is this version of this brooch with the colors, with the transparent kind of poured resin. Uh, red, red, green, green, pink and a double C is gold. But I feel that um, in my personal collection, what I am missing is more of that pearl and black with gold. So this is a combo that I don't have. It's simpler than the colored one, but they both cost the same. But I feel that... Um, it works very well. I can't see where this one... I think it's made in Italy. Yeah, that, that season they made all of their brooches in Italy. You know the little Baby Yoda brooch I use? That one is from the same collection. They use the same yellow, intense yellow gold. That one is also made in Italy. And I also see, because they have this different pin in the back, usually they have that little roll pin. You kind of roll it open and then you slide out the, the needle. But this brooch has a different mechanism. So you have uh, this contraption here, which doesn't move. 
and it's cut as as a P from Pierre Cardin in a way. So you ha you have to kind of lower the needle, go through that little S shape form, and then you, you pull the needle out. But this contraption itself does not have a little lever. It's 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 completely locked in, in that position. And a little attention to detail, the tip of it, right there on the top, you don't see it because the gold reflects light too much. There is a double C right on the top here. Very, very tiny double C. And there's also an extra added hidden, actually two more hidden double C's which is such attention to detail. I love when they do that. Literally this needle, okay, the bottom here at the root of the needle, on this flat part of the needle, on both sides, left and right, there's a tiny little double C on both sides of the needle. It's like hunting down Mickey Mouses in um, Disneyland. So the back of the brooch not the front. The front has that one double C. It's already too much, I know. But it's such a beautiful logo. The back of the brooch is logo overload. We got one double C, two double C, three double C, four double C. And on the authenticity stamp, five. We got five double C logos hiding in the back of the brooch alone. Plus, we have Chanel inscribed down here on the authenticity stamp, the copyright, the registered trademark, the year of production, and where it was manufactured. Like that's, I love those details. And when you put the brooch on, you don't see any of that. It's something that only you know. Um, the wind testy says, we put the logos on the back. Yes, we do. <laughs> CC Spices love the brooch. Thank you so much. It's very heavy. It is a beautiful piece, uh, very heavy, which means if this, if you put it on something too light and it rips through and falls down, this will break because it's so heavy, it's massive, it's not hollow, it's not cheap, you know what I mean? It's fully filled up. When this thing, it's very heavy. If this thing falls, it's gonna break it, it's gonna shatter into a thousand pieces. The resin would pop out, it would crack and break, and uh, the metal would dent as well. So you gotta be very, very careful with this one. It's a beautiful piece, classic heritage Chanel piece. Uh, oh. And, you know, I never talk about, I don't like to talk about investment when I talk about Chanel. I don't think that Chanel pieces are investments. However, every single time I have hunted down or made any research on Chanel costume jewelry, it's these classic Byzantine looking pieces that always go for astronomical prices. And funny enough, in the boutiques, they don't cost that much. <laughs> to buy these new... They cost less to buy them new than to buy them secondhand. So that's a little uh, advice for me to you. If you do want your classic looking Chanel brooches and costume jewelry, try getting them in the boutiques new rather than secondhand because uh, you will get them at a better price, which is insane because usually everything is more expensive in the boutiques. Well, not with these special costume jewelry pieces. I'm not talking about the CC earrings with the crystal studs that fall off. No, no, no. I'm talking about heritage Chanel pieces that are like you could... Even this, even this thing. Thank you so much for the donation, Andrea Myers. Andrea Myers donated $25. Thank you so much. Forever immortalized in this wonderful brooch unboxing video, by the way. Thank you so much, sweetie. Woo! <laughs> um, so, uh, what was I saying? You... Oh, this is so fascinating how they did this. How they attached the double C... Well, they glued it on. I wonder how long this will, the glue will, well, it's probably a really good glue, but the double C is glued on to the, the double C is not screwed on, it's glued on to the black resin. So you can see it's kind of protruding from the top. I love the, I could look at these pieces for hours and hours because to me they look like candy and they reflect light and shine so beautifully. So each one of these pearlescent bits is um, uniquely made. 
They have a different shape. They're kind of wobbly and wonky as if they're melting and ancient in time. So beautiful because we're used to seeing Chanel resins and transparent colors like candy, but we very rarely see that same candy shape, but in pearl form. Because when Chanel does pearl form, they usually do their rounded pearls, flat pearls, but to do them like as if they were like drops of candy, but made out of pearls, that's very rare. So it's a very, 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 very beautiful uh, rendition of the, um, of the pearl, of how they utilize the pearlescence in resin for a, for a Byzantine looking brooch for Chanel. So that is very, very, very interesting. And the brooch is turned inwards so that it falls better on your breast or chest or wherever you're putting it. It adapts, it's made to be adapted to the body. So it's not a flat, straight brooch. It has that little slight curve, curving inward so that it, 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 it fits better to the body because our body is also curvaceous. So that's it. The winter says to get the brooches from the boutiques. I'm telling you, right? Keep me away from a boutique, says Debbie. <laughs> Rhonda says, perfect piece for you. Enjoy wearing it. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Natalia P says, I would wear it on a coat or to close a scarf or poncho. Yeah, beautiful. And Natalia, I would also wear it to, to, to close a scarf or a poncho and on a coat. Sharon says, I want one. The best thing about this brooch is it's making Jacob and us all happy. Oh, thank you so much, Sharon. It's a cool piece. Um, I think you can still get it in boutiques because, as I said, like... It's not like this is a bestseller, and and you know how it is. I always kind of go for those pieces that are not bestsellers. As I said, it's been in the boutique for over a year. Nobody nobody got it, uh, so um, it's not like this is a sold out piece, you know. And if you like the colored version, I'm sure some boutiques also still have the colored version as well. Um, oh yes, Sachneko, that would be also interesting to wear it on a hat. If you have a sturdy hat and felt, not a beanie, because that's a bit dangerous, you know, because it can kind of bend and this thing can kind of wobble and fall off. But if you have a structured, solid hat, like felt, that doesn't fall in itself, then this, this could, could work very well. Angela King says, I like it better in the hair. Yeah, it can, it can do a... <laughs> like a little crown. <laughs> um... Church of Chanel, amen, says Oli. Jason Slate says, looks rich. Centered looks cool. Yeah, I like it centered too. Sean says, it would be good on a heavy coat. Jane says, go all in. Necklaces and brooch and all. Um, Sean says, Jacob, it's beautiful to go in the fashion bunker. Just perfect. Yeah, Debbie says, perfect on the cardigan. This is definitely a fashion bunker archive piece. Um... It's also kind of a reminder, you know, this thing came out in fall winter 2020, so it was like the apotheosis and the prime of the lockdown and a lot of these fashion houses didn't even know if certain pieces would go into production, would be finalized properly or not. So it comes from a time, it comes from a time of human history where certain things were uncertain to us you know we know much more now than we did back then we also don't know a lot of other things today that we did know back then but um it kind of always will remind me of 2020 and what a messed up time it was and what a difficult time it was and and in many ways it still is so um the fact that a brooch like this was made that looks so ancient and Byzantine also feels like, oh yeah, those heavy times we lived through. <laughs> so anyway, that's just my connection to it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, thumb it up. Subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. You can also follow me on Instagram, Super Deco, all spelled together. Also Twitter, Facebook. And you can follow me on my Chanel journey, haha. <laughs> um, Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together. and. The other Instagram profile I have dedicated to the life of Coco Chanel called Coco Chanel Privé, also all spelled together. Until next time, never forget to never give up on Coco love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.